four to two, where all of salvation history, all of human history, focuses in upon. For at this tomb, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the second person in the Most Holy Trinity, both God and man, conquered sin, death, and Satan, and rose from the grave. Restoring us not only to the Father's love, but elevating us to a new relationship with the Father. There is a tendency often within the life of the church, especially in our time, just to overly spiritualize redemption, redemption Christ won for us. But at this tomb, with his pierced hands, feet, side, and resurrected body, he shows us that the salvation that he won for us redeems all of us, body and soul. It shows the dignity of the human person created in the image and likeness of God, that God has saved us from sin, that enter into the mystery of the resurrection that occurred at this place in this tomb, one must enter into it, both with head and heart. And we see that the grace that St. Peter and St. John had to the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. John, the beloved disciple, that rested near the head and near the sacred heart of our Lord. And Peter, the vicar of Christ, the royal steward of the house of David, the first pope, are the two who first come to the tomb. But John beats him, not only because he's younger, but because he got the mystery first. Sometimes it takes our heads to get where our hearts arrive first in the moment. So today, we turn to our crucified and risen Savior before the tomb of his resurrection. We pray that through the Eucharist that we're about to receive, he may impart to us again the new life that he bestows upon us at every Mass, that he first showed to us, to the Church, to the world from this tomb, and may that new life begin heaven anew in us, within our hearts, sustain us, and give us what he wants for us here, freedom of the sons and daughters of God, healing, and the eternal life of heaven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.